Today, I'm going to survive 100 days in Minecraft's most dangerous biome, the Deep Dark. The Deep Dark is a new biome added to Minecraft and is home to the Warden, an extremely overpowered boss that can shoot through walls and kills you instantly unless you have full diamond armor or better. Not only do I have to survive 100 days in this world, which is going to be difficult since food is hard to come by and the Warden could spawn at any time, even above ground, I also have to beat all three Minecraft bosses, the Ender Dragon, the Wither, and the Warden all on hardcore mode with only one life. This would be my hardest challenge yet. But before we do any of that, I need to get myself some food. No animals spawn in the deep dark, so my best bet for food right now is gonna be to punch some grass. So hopefully I can use this grass. Oh no, this right here is a Skulk Shrieker. If you activate three of these, it summons the Warden, even above ground. Okay, we need to be careful. Any of these Shriekers that I see, I need to destroy them. After that close call, I spent some more time gathering up some seeds and clearing out any Skulk Shriekers that were near me, cause the last thing I need on day zero is an encounter with the Warden. Oh no! Oh my god, please no, please no, please no. Ah, uh, here it is! Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god. Okay, I need to go. Oh no. It senses me. Oh gosh. What do I do? It's day zero, I have literally nothing, and we're already encountering the Warden. If I get far enough away, it shouldn't be able to smell me over here. Okay, cool, it's going away. Nice. Now that the warden was gone, I could go back to surviving. I found a tree to chop down and stumbled across a beehive too. Oh, look at this, a beehive. I wasn't sure if I could do much with it, but I decided to keep it just in case I needed it in the future. After having chopped down a few more trees, I crafted myself some upgraded stone tools and went to plant up my seeds when this happened. And now before we do anything else, I'm gonna head down over here. Oh no. Another one? Oh my gosh. I need to run away. Now that I've encountered the warden twice, I was starting to learn its tricks and how to deal with it. After the second warning was gone, I decided to take care of my bees on the hill, and then head down to the coast to make myself a little wheat farm, since this would be my only source of food for a while. It was becoming night, and I had to work fast. Thankfully, no mobs spawned in the deep dark, but I still needed some food if I wanted to avoid starving to death. Now I think if the shriekers underwater go- oh gosh, never mind, another warden spawning, and I can't see anything! Okay, so it looks like if we get far enough away, then the Warden can't sense us from all the way over here. This was my third encounter with the Warden, and as long as I was crouching, I would be fine escaping it. I went back to my farm and tried to locate the Shrieker that spawned the last Warden. And this is the Shrieker down here that spawned that Warden. Oh, please no. Oh gosh! Now, this night was quickly turning into chaos. I had already spawned five Wardens in total, and I still had no food. I spent the rest of the night gathering some more seeds and came back to my farm in the morning to expand it even more. And look at that, we survived the first day, oh my gosh. With that done and day zero officially behind us, I wanted to get myself a bed to speed up my farm, since crops don't grow at night. But there aren't any sheep in this world, so I had to get creative with how I was going to get my wool. So naturally, the first thing that came to mind was an ancient city. Being in a deep dark only world, finding an ancient city should be super easy. So I started to mine down to deep slate level, hoping that I would eventually come across one. I managed to find some iron, but what I really needed was coal. The mines were so dark, and I wanted to craft up some torches. There's a warden spawning! Okay, let me grab this iron real quick before we go. Is it gonna sense me? Oh? It knows I'm here. Oh my god, I need to run! Okay, looks like we're okay for now. Oh my gosh! So it can sense you through walls, and I'm pretty sure if I stayed around there, then it would have shot me through a wall too, and I probably would have died. Now the sun is already setting on day one, and I really need to get myself a bed. So with my iron pickaxe in tow, I'm gonna go back down to the mines and see if I can do this safely this time. Another warden is spawning. I am gonna do something a little dangerous, and that's go towards the warden. Cause as long as I crouch, it shouldn't be able to see me. And it's right there, oh my gosh! Okay, I found one shrieker right here. I need to break them. Okay. After having taken care of the shriekers that were making my time in the mines much more difficult, and it being day two, I went back to the mines to continue my search for an ancient city. But as I was going down to the mines, I heard a warden. Okay, for some reason, this warden is not despawning. It should have been long enough for it to despawn, so I wanted to investigate what was going wrong. Oh, I know what happened. I see it over there. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug or something, but when the warden goes into water, it can't despawn. I don't know why, but they can't get out of water. If I hit it, what happens? Oh? Wait. Nothing's happening. The amount of health is insane. Oh my gosh. I actually just killed the warden. With the glitched out warden taken care of, I had to deal with a second warden. Oh no. Please no more wardens. I just killed one. Oh no. Lucky for me, it didn't end up in the water this time and went back underground normally. I kept mining and was finding even more iron. Once I made it down to deep slate level, I immediately found diamonds. Ooh, it's a lot of diamonds. Let's grab my iron pickaxe, our first diamonds. And with those diamonds, I crafted myself a diamond pickaxe and continued exploring. Oh, I found a cave. 
I wonder what's over here. No way. Oh my gosh. It's an ancient city. Whoa. That was so easy to find. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's jump down to the ancient city. And this is just what I need. Some wool to make a bed. I'm going to grab a bit extra in case I lose my bed. Now there is a chest over here. And I wonder what's inside. Please, I hope none more activate. What's inside? Oh, we got other side. Nice. What about over here? And some bones. That's going to be super useful. Nice. I was tempted to keep searching for more loot and diamonds, but with my half health, I would instantly die from the warden. And the trip down to the ancient city was successful. Now, since we're down here and it's nighttime, I have enough wood. So let's just craft up a bed and we could take our first nap. Welcome to day three. With the trip down to the ancient city successful and having crafted a bed, I went back to the surface to harvest some more food, chop down some more trees and check on my bees. Oh, look at that. The hive is full of honey. The beehive was ready to be harvested, so I crafted a campfire and smelted up some glass. And while I wait for that, I can grab my bones, turn it into bone meal, and get even more food. After that, I expanded my farm even more, and the glass was done smelting, so I turned it into bottles and went to go see my bees. And I kind of don't know how bees work, so I think if I just place this underneath, and then if I do this... Nice! It works! And I think you can also drink honey too, right? Yes, and it gives you food. Wow. The rest of day three was spent chopping down trees and tending to my farm. Up until now, I was just living on the surface, so I wanted to start working on a proper house. I had found a spot I wanted to build my house, and I started clearing out the skull to make it flat for building. The area was cleared out, and I was ready to start building, but I was quickly interrupted. What is this? It's a pillager patrol. Oh my god, I'm getting down to low health. I need to run. <laughs> Once the pillager patrol was taken care of, I started outlining my house. So I think down here, I'm going to add some barrels. The outline was complete, and I started working on some of the details. I need leaves. Leaves make everything look prettier. Another day had gone past, and I was still working on my house. But it was really starting to come together now. I was adding some final details, and the only thing I had left to do was add the roof. I couldn't decide between copper or deep slate for the roof, but I decided to try out deep slate first, since it was easier to obtain than copper. It's not the prettiest starter house, but it's the best I can do with the limited blocks. Another day of work, and my house was in the final stages. And we marked the completion of the roof with an MLG water. Oh my god, that was so bad. <laughs> Now that we had the roof all done, I need to go ahead and gather up some sand. That way I can make all the windows. The next day was spent gathering up some sand to turn into glass, and then into panes so I could add windows to my house. Alright, this is where I draw the line. It's day 8 and I still haven't found any coal, so I'm going down into the mines and I'm not coming back until I find coal. While searching for my coal, I realized that I was probably doing things wrong. After 1.18, coal spawns much more frequently at higher Y levels, so I went to the nearby mountains to start searching there instead. Okay, in this cave, is there gonna be anything? And as I was searching, I came across a surprise. Wait, I hear spiders! Oh! Oh, it could be a mob spawner! Well, too bad I don't have any coal to make some torches to light it up. Okay, here we go. It's all lit up. With the spawner looted and some string acquired, I went back to searching for coal, which, lucky for me, there was loads of it next to the spawner. There's some right here and right here, right next to our spawner. And now I can finally add some glass here, adding the glass to my house, and the exterior was complete. I went to the inside of the house and started making a cool room upstairs that would be partially open to the outside, and I spent the rest of the day working on it. And on day 10, it was done. All that was left to do was move in my items and make a bit of a storage system inside. I was running low on deep slate and went down to the mines to gather up some more. While I was down there though, I I also wanted to add some stairs to the mine entrance. That way I could get in and out much faster. I spent the next two days organizing my items in the house and it was really starting to feel like home. With my house finally complete, it was about time that I started getting some better loot. So I made my way down to the ancient city and began the process of looting all the chests. Okay, here we are in the ancient city. It's time to take this thing on for real. I had to be extra careful down here since there are loads of skull shriekers and opening chests activates them. Whoa, what is this? Is that a skeleton head? Yo, that is so cool. Check it out. <laughs> and we got an echo shard. Huh, the echo shard, that's a new item. And I think you use that to craft the recovery compass. Looting all the chests gave me loads of loot. And by the fourth chest, my inventory was already overflowing. But while making it back to drop off my extra items, I encountered the warden and I was in a really weird spot. So while I was trying to get away from it, the warden noticed me. Oh no. Oh no. It knows I'm here. It's chasing me. Thankfully, I was able to get away this time, but I might not be that lucky if it happens again. Not having any armor means I'm an instant kill for the Warden, and a two-hit with the range attack. So I need to be extra careful when looting this ancient city. After the Warden that was chasing me despawned, I went back to the entrance to the city and crafted up a chest to drop off my extra loot. That way, I can continue looting. It's day 14, and I'm still down in the ancient city. I was trying to avoid spawning too many Wardens, so the entire looting process went super slow. I had to crouch everywhere I went, and before I could open any chests, I had to check around 
around for any shriekers around me. Using this method, it was much safer, and I managed to avoid many of the wardens. Up until this point, a lot of the loot was not that amazing. I mean, I got some bones, which was great so I could turn it into bone meal, but besides that, I was a bit disappointed, until I came across this chest. Oh my gosh! Two god apples? Holy crap! And some diamond armor? Amazing! Two enchanted golden apples in one chest is absurd, and my opinion about the ancient city totally changed. This made me even more excited to keep searching the chests, despite it being pretty dangerous. Please no. Ah! Run away! I wonder what happens when it falls in the lava. Wait, I want to try something. This might be dangerous. Oh, it doesn't burn. Okay, I'm running away. After trying out something with the warden that didn't work, I decided to pause the looting and wanted to focus on destroying as many shriekers as I could. Once that was complete, I wanted to check up on our warden friend who was in the lava. Yeah, it's still in the lava. Do you think it's glitched like last time? Now, 1.19 pre-release 2 came out shortly after I finished recording this video, and Mojang fixed this bug in that update. But for the time being, this was an easy way for me to kill the warden. There we go. Wow, that's two wardens killed. That's insane. I spent the entire day looting the ancient city and managed to get some pretty OP items like Loyalty 3, Silk Touch, Swift Sneak 3, Flame, it's insane. All of day 16 was spent looting as well, and after that, I was finally done. Oh my god, Efficiency 5, holy crap, we're getting some really good books. With all my loot relocated to a few chests at the entrance of the city, I didn't get nearly enough diamond gear, so I went back down to the city to start a strip mine in search of more diamonds. Since the only mob I have to deal with is the Warden, I need good armor, because anything less than full diamond armor is a one-hit kill. Okay. Oh my, wait. I just passed these diamonds and didn't even see them. <laughs> Wait, what the heck? I spent the rest of day 17 mining and got quite a few diamonds. Alright, it's been a while longer and I have 21 diamonds, so let's craft up a chest plate. And there we go, full diamond armor. Alright, I'm done mining and my diamond pickaxe is about to break, so I'm gonna head back to the surface and organize all my loot. And this staircase makes going up and down so much nicer. Whoa, look at all these trees! Alright, it might have taken quite a while, but I finally have all my stuff organized. So I'm gonna craft myself an extra diamond pickaxe, and I'm gonna go back down to the mines and get myself some obsidian. Okay, here we are. And now I'll use this obsidian alongside one of my books and two diamonds to craft up an enchanting table. I now had an enchanting table, but no bookshelves to make it anywhere near useful. So I came up with a plan to get some. The only structures apart from ancient cities that generate in the deep dark are strongholds. So my plan was to head there and collect up a bunch of books from the stronghold library. And while I was there, I would also beat the ender dragon in the process. But before I was to do any of this, I needed to go to the nether to get some blaze rods and ender pearls. That way I could craft some eyes of ender. Wait, a lead. Does that mean there was a wandering trader here? Wait, what the heck? <laughs> That's kind of weird. A quick pit stop at the wheat farm to stock up on some more food, and I was ready to go. This time we're well equipped. A bit of searching went by, and I found a fortress not too far from my portal. Ooh, check it out, a fortress. Now I just have to get over there without dying. They're fighting each other, amazing. Have fun guys. Hi Blazes. Oh my God, there's so many. I think if I go for 10 or 11, I should be okay, because I want a few extra so I can make some brewing stands. And boom. There we go, we got 11. All right, I'm gonna leave. With my blaze rod successfully gathered up, I just had to find a bastion to get some ender pearls. And hopefully it's as easy as finding this fortress that I just accidentally wandered upon. Ooh, look at this, a soul sand valley. You know what that means? I can get some bone blocks and I can bring these home to get even more food. Now I'm gonna chop down some of these trees because then I can turn this into planks and get four times the amount of blocks. And is that what I think it is in the distance? It's a bastion, check it out. On day 22, I came across a bastion. This one was a bridge bastion, which I'm pretty familiar with. There's this big pillar with a bunch of gold blocks at the end of the bridge, so that was where I headed first. Oh my god, what? How is he jumping like that, what? Did you see that? What I'm looking for is a giant pillar of gold blocks, and there it is. All this gold just for me. Come here, guys, and then break this. I can all go in there. I'm gonna grab myself a chest, empty out my inventory a bit, because it's looking a little overflowed right now. Look at that, 15 ender pearls already. That's amazing. I think if we go like this. Oh no! But for now, we only need the important stuff, and that's the ender pearls, obsidian, and blaze rods. Having secured everything I needed to go to the end, this would have been the worst time to die. So I decided to play it safe and mine through the walls to head back home. That way I wouldn't have to deal with any of the nether mobs trying to kill me. 
Now, you know what would be super useful before I go fight the Ender Dragon? Having Infinity on my bow. And if I'm not mistaken, there should be some string in here. Okay, there is. Nice. And then with all my extra iron, I can craft myself an anvil. And then using this anvil, I can get myself a bow that has infinity on it. All I need is just a few arrows, which I can't seem to find for some reason. Oh, I left them back at the bastion. Well, I think I know where I'm going next. You know what? Before we go, I'm going to try to add Soul Speed 3 to my boots. And might as well add Swift Sneak to my leggings too. Okay, let's test it out. Whoa. Wait, if I sneak? Oh my god. I'm literally sneaking. I wonder what it's like to bridge with. Okay, what about... If I spam click. Holy crap! You can bridge so fast! Having added some enchanted books to my armor, I was ready to go to the nether. Since I had already made a path going from the bastion to spawn, all I had to do was follow my tunnel, and I was there in no time. Whoa! Look at soul speed! Holy crap! If I sneak with soul speed, I still go extremely fast. I just needed to grab a few arrows to power my infinity bow, and I made my way back home, trying to dodge as many mobs as possible. Oh god. Not now. Please! Day 26, and I started on my journey to find the stronghold. I crafted up some Eyes of Ender, threw one, and headed to the nether to travel in the same direction that the eye was pointing in the overworld. This way I could travel 8 times as fast. And from speedrunning, I know that strongholds generate in rings, so you can take those coordinates and divide them by 8 to get a rough area of where you should build your portal in the nether. So I headed to those coordinates, built a portal, and went through to the other side. Let's throw one more time. Oh, it's going this way now! Okay, so we are close. Okay, now my guess is somewhere in these 4 chunks. Let's see. It is! Nice! Now we can dig down. Hopefully I don't end up in lava. Oh, here it is! Now I need to not only find the portal room, but I also need to find the library too. Because we came here for books and to beat the Ender Dragon. This stronghold was a mess, and I had quite a hard time finding the portal. Oh my gosh, finally! Holy crap, it took me forever to find this thing! Boom! Here we go! Now before I go through, I need to find the library, because I need some books for my enchanting setup. Oh my gosh! It's right here. Amazing. With the portal and the library located, my plan was successful. So many books. Yay! I gathered up as many blocks as my inventory could fit and headed back to the portal room. But just as I was about to head through the portal, I realized that I was super underprepared to fight the dragon. My axe broke and I barely had any food. So to be safe, I dug my way out of the portal room back to the surface and grabbed some water to make a portal to head home. I can then place this up there and then just place lava as we go. Let's go home. Look at that, I only had to build my original portal this much farther for me to end up probably right in the stronghold. Now, I can take all my books, grab a bunch of wood, and turn it all into bookshelves. Let's see if it works. Do we have level 30? We do! Amazing! Let's see. Fortune 3! Oh my gosh. Alright, we need 30 levels, and getting that is gonna be pretty easy with all this skulk around here. I spent the rest of day 27 mining a bunch of skulk to get some XP levels, and I was ready to try out my first level 30 enchantment on my new enchanting table. Oh, that's really good. Oh my gosh. The rest of day 28 was spent preparing for the Ender Dragon fight. And on the morning of day 29, I harvested all of my food. It's beautiful. And now I can craft up a bunch of food. Okay, I'm officially ready to go to the end. Let's get this done. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Okay. Whoa. Oh my God, that scared me. <laughs> We're gonna do this the old fashioned way by destroying all the towers, making sure to have my water bucket in my off. Oh God, see? That this this is why. <laughs> now, so far, I haven't looked at an Enderman, which is quite nice, but I don't want to jinx myself. All right, the dragon's perching. I can just get in here before it goes. Yep, we're doing some good damage. Let's see if I can get some good hits before she perches. Ah, it's so loud. Okay, okay, we're super close. There we go. Free the end. We did it. We killed the Ender Dragon. But what I'm really after is all this XP. The Ender Dragon was dead, and my time in this world was about to become much easier. I headed over to the end gateway that spawned and made my way through in hopes of finding an end city to get an elytra. Here we are. Any end cities nearby? And bridging is so much faster with the swift sneak enchantment. This is gonna make finding an end city way easier. Imagine having swift sneak in Bed Wars. That would be crazy. Okay, I don't think this end city actually has a ship, but it looks like it still has some good areas to get some loot. Give me your shulker shells. We got our first shulker shells and we have two of them. So you know what that means. It's time to craft our first shulker box. Awesome. Now I can put all my other loot inside of here. Let's do this. Oh, nice diamonds. Ah, there's so many. Okay. What do we have up here? Whoa, look at this. And all these diamonds too. Diamond shovel. Awesome. See, this is why I wanted to come here because I knew I could get some good stuff. A mending sword. Awesome. I didn't know we could get emeralds from here. I can use these to trade with a wandering trader if one spawns. That's amazing! Wow, what a great trip! Alright, and that marks this end city successfully looted. And now I can drop down here. 
Boop. Oh, look at that. Another end city. But I still don't think it has a ship. Oh my gosh. Thank you very much, end city. You didn't really give me much. Okay, another end city. Does it have a ship? Oh my gosh. I don't think it does. <laughs> Please, I just want an elytra. I spent a few days looting up some end cities that had no ships, making sure to grab diamonds and all the other good loot, as well as shulker shells so I could craft myself some shulker boxes. Okay, another end city. And I don't know if it has a ship, so it looks like I need to get closer. Finally! Wow, that took a long time. We're going straight for the elytra first, and then I'm gonna loot the rest of the city. Time to finally go get myself an elytra. Hello, friend. Goodbye, friend. Here we go. Sky is the limit. Oh my god. Look at this sword. Nice. Oh, and more emeralds. Now I can add mending to my elytra right away. And here we go. We got the elytra. Wow, it looks pretty cool. And I'll just chuck all my extra stuff into here. Look at all this loot. It's amazing. Okay, I'd say we have plenty of shulker shells. I'm gonna pop my elytra back on. And I think it's time to fly home. I had officially gotten the elytra and decided to head home. While heading home though, I went the wrong way and stumbled across this. Whoa, another end city with a ship. Look at that, one, two, three. <laughs> Oh, 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 so close. I can't believe how long it took me to find an elytra. But now that we have that done and we have loads of XP, I can head back home with loads of levels from the Ender Dragon fight and a bunch of armor and books gathered up from the end cities. I went over to my enchanting table to see what I could get. I spent the next four days getting as many enchantments as possible. This involved enchanting, gathering up a bunch of XP from nearby Skulk and doing it all over again. By the end of it, I had gotten all of my armor and tools enchanted and just had a few more items left. So it's been quite a while and the last thing that I have to enchant is my leggings. Now my leggings only have protection 3 and since I have another swift sneak 3 book, I'm actually going to disenchant these and see if I can try to get protection 4 on them. Fire protection, I don't want that. Now it gives me protection 4. Okay, we need to get some more levels. Alright, time for protection 4 on my leggings. Then I can go over here and add swift sneak 3. And there we go, protection 4 on all of my armor. And I have some pretty good enchantments on my boots too. And as for all my tools, I have efficiency 5 on 2 pickaxes and my axe. And I have a silk touch and a fortune 3 pickaxe. So I think we're pretty good to go now. Now I need to worry about my food problem. I had a plan. No animals spawn in the overworld because we're in the deep dark. So my best bet for food is actually in the nether. One of the easiest easiest and most useful food farms to make is a hogland food farm. These farms are really easy to build, so that's what I was going to do next. I spent all of day 41 and 42 gathering up the resources and blocks that I would need for the farm. Having all those new enchantments on my tools made the whole process way easier. That's just what I need. Having gathered up everything I needed, I made my way to the nether and up onto the roof. All I have to do is crouch here, press space, and there we go. Step one is making the spawning platform, and we have to make it four blocks off the ground. And this is where the hoglins are gonna fall into. And there we go, it's all done. It didn't even take me a full day to make this whole thing. Now all I have left to do is tower up to my AFK spot, making sure to add ladders on my way up. And here I am at the top, and it looks like it's working. I'm gonna do a quick AFK test and let's see how much we get. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Now uh, let's go check and see how well it's doing. Ooh, nice. Four stacks of food, that's already pretty good. My food problem was solved and I no longer needed to eat bread to survive, but I still had one more problem. I had the elytra, but no firework rockets to make it useful. So my next goal in this world was to get some. Now, if you remember, no mobs spawn in the overworld, which means no creepers for gunpowder. So once again, I had to get creative. My first thought was to make a gas farm because they also drop gunpowder. The first thing I have to gather up for this farm is a bunch of obsidian. So I'll head over to the end and mine up five stacks of obsidian. Okay, there we go, five stacks. That actually was not that hard to gather. The next item I had to gather up for the farm was 17 stacks of building blocks. So I went down to the mines to get some and would also use this as an opportunity to mine for some more iron. Once I had all the blocks, I spent the rest of the day gathering all the other items that I would need when I was greeted by a friend. Oh my gosh, is that a wandering trader? What happened to your llamas? <gasps> Gunpowder, give me as much as I can. Let's also go check on the sugar cane, see how it's doing. Looks like we have some growing over here. And I'm gonna craft my first firework rockets. 36 rockets, okay. That's pretty good. I had some rockets now, which was gonna make things so much easier, but I still needed a few more items to make the farm. One of them being a sticky piston. Normally this would be impossible since there isn't a way to get slime balls in this world. But lucky for me, I'm in a deep dark only world and the ancient cities have a secret room which will make this all possible. If I make my way to the center and I need to locate this one block right here. If I stand on it, it activates the pistons down here and then I can make my way into the redstone room. And this place has all the stuff I'll need. I need to grab some comparators. I also need to grab some redstone lamps, some repeaters, some redstone dust. I'll also need some redstone blocks, a sticky piston, and there we go. We're all ready to go. And here we go. That should be everything I need. Can you guys watch my house when I'm gone? I want to make sure no wardens get inside. And now I'll use my firework rockets. Oh yes. 
It's amazing. And we should be back up here on the roof. Yes, okay. Cool, now I just have to find myself a soul sand valley. Just what I need. Now that I was here, I had to build the farm. It might take a little bit of time, but in the end, it'll save me so much time in the future. This was the nether portion of the farm done, and all I had to do was head through the portal and start working on the overworld section. All right, and this is the overworld part of the farm done. Let's see if it works. It's supposed to cycle in between the two portals. And it works, okay, cool. The gas spawning platforms are pretty straightforward with four large portals and four layers for spawning. And just as I was about to finish, I ran out of obsidian. Okay, I'm in the process of building all this and I ran out of obsidian. I'm not really sure why. The directions said I only needed five stacks, but I guess I have to head back and mine up some more. Oh my gosh. A warden just spawned immediately. What the heck? All right, now I'm not sure how much more I'm gonna need, so I might as well just mine up a few more stacks. With the proper amount of obsidian in hand, I could finally finish the farm by spawn-proofing the top of the portals. Okay, it should be all done. Let's see if it works. Okay, ghasts, where are you? Oh, here's one. Oh my god, that sound is awful. <laughs> Yo, we got gunpowder. That was an accident. <laughs> all right, it's been a little while and I've been AFK at this farm. And after all this time, I managed to get this much gunpowder and this many gas tiers. And with an insane amount of gunpowder gathered up, that's one ingredient for firework rockets crossed off the list. So my next farm was gonna be a small sugarcane farm. It shouldn't take too long to set up and I plan to put it in the spawn chunks. That way it would always be working in the background. Let's see if it works. It does. Nice. And now I just need a hopper minecart below to collect it all. And then hopefully, this should work. With the sugarcane farm complete, my next plan will require a bunch of TNT. I need to mine for netherite, because before these 100 days end, I want to kill the warden 1v1, without having it glitched out in lava or water. And if I'm going to do that, I need the best armor in the game, and that requires netherite. So I went off to find some sand, and spent the rest of day 56 gathering up as much as I could. Now, coupled with all this gunpowder, I wonder how much TNT I can make. Okay, almost two stacks. That's not bad. Now, I don't want to go too crazy on the TNT, so I'm going to space it quite far. And here we are. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. There's some right here. It looks like the saving the TNT way is going to be a little harder than normal. Wait, wh what am I doing? Oh my god, I'm not smart. Look at that. I see some ancient debris. I spent the rest of day 57 and 58 mining for ancient debris and managed to get enough for a full set of netherite armor. All right, back home safe and it's time to smelt up all this ancient debris. Then I can grab my netherite scraps out of here, plonk them in here with some gold to make four netherite ingots. Now we'll put our smithing table out here, take off my armor, here we go. Full netherite armor. Oh my gosh. Now, if only I had some more TNT to get my tools as well, but the most important thing is that we have the armor. Now that I had a full set of protection for netherite armor, I was ready to take on the next boss, the Wither. I spent the rest of day 59 emptying out my inventory and preparing for the fight, and also spent a few days AFK at the sugarcane farm to get some more firework rockets. After that, I was ready to head to the nether and gather up the three wither skeleton skulls that I needed. Since I had a looting three sword, it should be much easier to get all of them. Once I was there, I wanted to track down a fortress in a soul sand valley, because mobs in the fortress spawn much more frequently there. Oh, look at this! Alright, now we just have to hope for loads of wither skeletons. There's still a bunch of wither skeletons. Oh my god, there's so many! There's actually so many. Look at that. Oh my god. What? How are there so many? Okay, at least 20 wither skeletons. Ow. That really hurt. Oh, I got a skull. Okay, nice. Oh my god. I'm getting hit from every direction. Oh god, I had to eat a god apple. I fell into the lava. Oh, oh no. Now that I have a god apple, I can probably just run in here and just kill everyone. I have so much health and I have resistance. It's amazing. What's that? A wither skeleton killing me? What? I have two skulls now. Okay, we just need one more. My helmet is about to break. Oh my gosh. I think I might take my helmet off. Okay, I think I should leave. This is getting really dangerous. And I have three skulls. Oh my god. I didn't even notice me getting the third one. I had all the wither skeleton skulls that I needed. And it was time to head home. But after that crazy nether trip, my armor was in really poor shape. My helmet had just a few durability points left, and everything else was getting a bit too low for my comfort. So I needed to do something about this. Repairing my elytra was easy, since I had mending on it. But as for everything else, I had to get more armor or a mending book to make sure that I didn't lose my armor. Since I had lots of extra rockets, my best bet for getting easy enchanted armor was going to be to loot some more end cities. So I went over to the end and began looting. Break into these chests, and is there anything good for me? Okay, we got some diamonds. Oh, and I got mending boots. All right, the second end ship is over here, so let's go loot it. 
my fourth elytra. That didn't take too long, and it was pretty successful. After combining all my armor, I was left with just one problem, my helmet. It still had super low durability and no mending on it, so I had to figure out a way to get this helmet repaired without having to go to the nether to get more netherite. Since I found a mending book in an ancient city earlier, I had the idea to search for more ancient cities, that way I could get some mending books to add to my armor and tools. Since I'm in a deep dark only world, it should be as simple as mining straight down and coming across one. Oh, there's a cave right here. Hopefully we don't set off any shriekers. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> well, now I can fly around and see if I can find any good loot. Oh, another god apple. Fire aspect, oh, swift sneak three, I'll take that. Fortune two. Oh, he knows I'm here. I'm gonna fly away. I don't hear him getting closer. Wait, no, he is getting closer. Oh my god, he's right there. Holy crap. They can chase you from that far? That is not okay. You would think after surviving 66 days in the deep dark that the warden wouldn't scare me anymore, but it definitely still does. I thought I was safe from the warden, so I perched on top of a pillar to scout out some more chests, but it turns out I wasn't safe after all. Oh my god. Oh! Oh my god. Okay, he did, he did the range attack. He's chasing me. Holy crap. That was the closest call yet. I had to be more careful. Having survived 66 days with the warden, I was getting a bit too comfortable, and it was showing. I kept looting the ancient city, being a bit more careful about the wardens this time, and I came across another OP chest. Oh my god! Two more god apples? There's a warden that's dying. What the heck? I don't know where this warden is. Is he up there? Oh, he's drowning! What the heck? Here he is. Hey! Oh my god! <laughs> I killed him! Oh, and immediately after, there's another warden that spawns. Alright, I made it to the surface. Oh, and I'm welcomed by a warden. <laughs> After looting another ancient city, much quicker than the first one this time, I headed out to dig down in a different area. That way I could try my luck with another city, hoping that this one would have a mending book. Oh my gosh. Wow, being in a deep dark only world makes it really easy to find ancient cities. Oh my god, two god apples? Okay, another chest. Oh, what? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm getting so many god apples. Another god apple? Oh my god. If I drop items on top of a skulk sensor, then it might be able to distract the warden. Okay, let's test it out. I was quickly learning all the warden's tricks and how to fool it, but even though I was learning everything about the warden, I still hadn't found a mending book yet, which was the whole reason why I even came here. It's completely distracted. Does it notice me if I move? Interesting. It doesn't notice me if I move. Would you look at that? It's day 69. Now what's over here? Oh my gosh, we finally got a mending book. With the mending book in hand, everything was starting to come together. I had what I needed to heal my armor, and because of that, I would be ready to fight the wither. All right, now hopefully I can add mending to my helmet. There we go. Now I can put it back on and mine up a ton of skulk. There we go, fully healed up. My only other armor piece that wasn't looking too great were my leggings. But luckily in here, I have a pair of Protection 4, Unbreaking 3, and Mending leggings, and I also have a Swift Sneak 3 book, so I can add this to it, and there we go. To save myself the pain of having to get another mending book, I headed to the nether to get some more ancient debris to upgrade my new leggings to netherite, instead of having to add mending to my existing ones. Once I was in the nether, I started mining and did so for the rest of day 69. Oh my gosh. And with day 69 coming to a close, I found the last piece of ancient debris. <laughs> Wait, what? What the heck is that? It spreads? Kill a mob near a skulk catalyst. I guess I have two pairs of leggings now. With that all done, I just had to prepare a few things and get my inventory all sorted. Then I would be ready to fight the wither. Now, we did manage to get a bunch of echo shards and I have a compass, so I wonder what would happen if I crafted a recovery compass. Oh, it just spins. Huh. Well, I guess this item's totally useless for hardcore, but it looks pretty cool. Check it out. That looks kind of cool. And what I'm also curious about is this. A bunch of disc fragments. I think if I put them together like this, yeah. Ooh, this music disc looks really cool. Cool. Okay, I'm ready to fight the wither. I'll grab my three skulls, four pieces of soul sand, and I'm all ready to go. Now, I'm gonna fight this in the overworld, but I wanna go far away from home. I think over here should be far enough. Now, since we are in a deep dark only world, I kinda wanna see what happens if the wither fights the warden. Here it comes. Okay, and I'm spawning the wither, and let's see what happens. Oh, it's fighting me! Oh my god, I have a wither and a warden chasing me. Oh, they're fighting! Look at it go! Oh my god! Whoa! I wonder who's gonna win. <laughs> I can't believe the warden hasn't died yet. <gasps> oh my god, okay, it just died. I feel like this was a bad idea. Oh, I'm getting low on health. Okay, well, it's nighttime, 
There's still a bunch of wardens, and I still haven't killed the Wither. Okay, the Wither, you need to die. I'm gonna stop trying to get it to fight the Warden. This is just not gonna work. There's more Warden spawning. Oh my gosh. Um, this is going really bad. All right, I have nine gone apples. I'm just gonna eat one. Okay, it's getting close. Okay, here it is. I think I can do it. Holy crap. I made it way too hard for myself. <laughs> that was a disaster. Look at my armor. Oh my gosh. And there's still this Warden right here in the center that I have to deal with. I don't wanna get too close though, I'm scared. Okay, I killed it. Now the wither fight was over. I headed home and crafted myself a beacon. I only had enough blocks to make it a level one beacon though, and that's not gonna cut it. There we go, bring home the beacon. If I wanted to fight the warden 1v1, I was gonna need all the help I can get. I mean, you just saw, I almost died to the wither, and the warden has 250 hearts of health, which is 100 hearts more than the wither. So my plan was to get a full beacon. Mining for iron or anything else would take forever. So my plan was to head to the nether and get a bunch of gold blocks from nearby bastions. On the morning of day 74, I mined up some more skulk to get some more XP, and crafted up a few more bows to enchant. Ooh, punch two. Oh my gosh, okay, that's a great bow. Wait, I have a power for a book in here and I have a flame book okay so we're gonna add it to this one we should have a max dot bow I had a max dot bow which would make raiding bastions miles easier but before I was to head to the nether I needed to afk at my sugarcane farm which I expanded to make it work a lot faster all right it's been a few days of afk at the farm and check it out I have over a stack of rockets with loads of food and plenty of rockets it was time for me to start my nether adventure not long after setting off on my trip oh here we go it's a treasure bastion the most dangerous type <laughs> What the heck? How am I like this? Wait, what? I was terrified of Piglin Brutes. Sure, I had a full Netherite and Protection 4 armor, but these guys disable shields, and if you get caught in a corner with a few of them, it's almost certain death. So I was careful to snipe as many as possible before I went down and looted the center. Having a maxed out bow made everything go way faster, and after killing as many Brutes as I could, I was ready to loot it. I'm gonna mine this spawner real quick. There we go. I think it's safe to drop down. Let's grab all of these as fast as I can, and I think we're good to go and then I'm gonna fly to the top and get the rest of the blocks. Now, if I fly around the back of this, it should be safer to loot. Yeah, so here are the gold blocks. I hate the treasure bastions, they're so scary. But all in all, we managed to get 27 gold blocks just from one bastion. That's pretty good. And I already found one. Like, they were right next to each other. Luckily, Bridge has lots of gold blocks very easily accessed right here. And that brings my total up to 43 gold blocks. Wow, I already made so much progress in just two bastions. Here we go, another bastion. What's in these chests? Ooh, gold blocks, lots of gold ingots, and golden carrots. Now, if I mine down here, there should be gold underneath. Yes, there is. Luckily, I used to speedrun, so I know where all the gold is in these bastions. And it's time to find another bastion. Okay, now, for some reason, I forgot to record the last bastion, but I'm at another bastion, and I'm about to loot it. My luck with bastions was really good, and I just had a few more gold blocks to get. And then I can head to the center and get all these gold blocks. Oh, here come the brutes. Oh my god. I'm gonna use my punch bow. Bye bye. Oh my gosh, another treasure bastion? Now this should probably be the last one because treasure bastions have loads of gold. So I should be able to get a ton. And hopefully this puts us at two stacks and 36. I finally had everything I needed. Coupled with the gold blocks I had back at home, I would have exactly enough to make a full power beacon. To travel home, I left the treasure bastion and made my way up to the roof. That way I could fly home a lot easier and not have to worry about any of the dangers of the nether. And look at that, the beautiful sunrise on day 80. And here's my current beacon. I'm gonna tear it down because I wanna build it in a spot where I can fight the warden. But before I do that, I'm gonna smelt up the ancient debris I got, craft it into a netherite ingot, and add netherite to this mending chest plate. Now I can combine my current chest plate and my mending chest plate to get a protection for and mending chest plate. Now I also got some mending boots, but I don't have enough ancient debris to add to them. I just need two more scraps. So I'm gonna quickly head back to the nether and see if I can find two more pieces of ancient debris. All right, we finally had the two pieces and there's one more. And add it to my mending boots. I just need a little more levels. Oh, hi friends. And I can combine them together. Now we finally have all mending armor. Before I was to kill the warden one-on-one, -on -one, I wanted to see how strong it actually was. So I gathered up some iron blocks and some pumpkins from around the world to turn into a few iron golems. To see what was going on, I also wanted to try out some night vision potions. I wasn't sure if they could counteract the darkness effect, but it was worth a shot. While getting everything together though, I realized I didn't have any nether wart, so I had to go on yet another nether adventure. Okay, well, now I know where to go next. Now I think just over this way is a fortress. Oh, we got nether wart, nice. This guy 
guy just converted. Why do they only have one ear? <laughs> now I'm gonna craft up some bottles, fill them up with water, pop it into my brewing stand. And I actually wanna craft up more than just three. So I'm gonna get these guys going over here too. And to make it longer, I'll add some redstone. And I'll house these in their own special shulker box. And I'm gonna fly over until I see a skulk shrieker. And oh, I also can't forget to drink my night vision potion. I wonder if it's even gonna work. Oh, it barely works. Here it is. Okay. I'm gonna build an iron golem. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. The warden was so much stronger than I expected. It barely took any damage from the iron golems I spawned and could kill one in just four hits. But I was curious, how many iron golems would it take to kill a warden? Five, 10, 20? I had to find out. So the next thing I set off to do was mine for as much iron as I could get. I mined for iron for the next hour and a half without sleeping and managed to get a decent amount of iron. All right, so I just got back from mining and this is what I managed to get. So let's mine it all up and see how much raw iron I can get. I mined it all up with fortune three and in total, I had just over five stocks of iron. I popped it into my furnaces and went to check on my sugarcane farm. And surprisingly, it worked while I was gone. But I was down to my last rocket and I was all out of gunpowder. So I quickly went back to my gunpowder farm and spent a few minutes killing gas to get a stack of gunpowder. We don't really need much more than that, so it's time to head home. I made my way back home, crafted up my rockets, and went to check on my iron. It all stopped smelting as soon as I got back. What the heck? I had everything I needed to spawn 10 iron golems and have them fight the warden. So I flew a bit away from my house and made a box to contain the golems. If 10 iron golems is not enough, then there's no way I'm going to beat this thing myself. Is it? Yep, it is. Okay, spawning. Okay. It's working. Oh gosh, come on, iron golems. Please! Oh my god. It was down to the last one. What? Three of them didn't even participate in the fight. Oh my gosh, that was such a waste. It took seven iron golems to kill one warden. That's crazy, especially considering that you only need two to kill the wither. After seeing that, it really hurt my confidence. I didn't want to die after having come so far. I needed to prepare more. Since I already had protection for mending armor, a maxed out sword, a full power beacon, a bunch of potions, I set out to get even more enchanted golden apples. Surprisingly, they're not that hard to come by in this world. I mean, I already found 11 in just a few ancient cities, so I could totally find more. With my new goal set, I flew far away to somewhere I had never been before and dug down to find a new ancient city. I fell down into a cave and it's extremely dark and I accidentally spawned the warden. Oh my god, wait, am I above an ancient city? Oh my gosh, yeah, look, I'm in an ancient city. Finding them is just too easy in this world. You know what? I'm gonna drink a potion of night vision. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Oh god, okay. Oh my gosh, two god apples. Let's check this one. Oh my god, two golden apples? And another golden apple? Whoa, we have 14 now. No god apples. Oh my gosh, you're kidding. I got six golden apples from one ancient city. That is insane. So I think I'm adequately prepared. Look at this, deep slight coal. Isn't that super rare? I had 16 enchanted golden apples now. I was ready. I did everything I could to be as prepared as possible. And the only thing left to do was to find a good place to fight the warden. A quick flight to an area behind my house and I found the perfect place. Ooh. Look at this. It's like a little arena. I scouted the area for a bit, then set out to get rid of all the shriekers. After all, I only wanted to deal with one warden, not 15 or something. With that complete, I went home to grab some more blocks to get rid of all the water over there. As we've seen in these 100 days, the warden is super easy to kill in the water, and I wanted a real challenge, no cheating. So all the water had to go, and I wanted to flatten out the terrain as well. Now the reason why I'm making this flat is because it's gonna be a lot safer to fight the warden if I'm not tripping over stuff, because it's gonna be super dark and I can't see anything. My Finding all this grass is going extremely slow because I only have efficiency three on my shovel. Oh my gosh, efficiency five. Wait, I should use this on my shovel. That was easy. All right, I'm almost done here. I'm covering up the last bit of water and we should be good to go. And just as the sun is setting, I'm done clearing out quite a large area. And now it's time to get all of my items and everything prepared. I had the arena ready. The only thing left for me to do was to build the beacon and get my inventory sorted. And the first thing I have to do is set up my beacon. Okay, here we go. A full powered beacon. Check it out. Now, I kind of just made this for show and it's not really practical to have it all the way up here because it's going to get in the way of me and the warden. So I'm going to move it underground. All right, so I slightly miscalculated in how I was going to place the beacon. So it looks like just the beacon itself is going to be sticking out. And I think that should be fine. On here, I'm going to put resistance too because regeneration is too slow to deal with the warden. Now, I could give myself strength, but I'd rather not die. So I'm going to give myself resistance too instead. With the arena fully set up, I flew home to gather all the items I would need and I didn't really need too much. Just 
just some blocks, arrows, and potions. For the potions, however, I wanted splash potions since they would be much faster than drinking them. So I quickly headed over to my gunpowder farm to get just a few gunpowder, which only took me a few seconds. I literally only had to be at the farm for less than a minute. All right, now I can throw all of these into my brewing stands and use gunpowder to turn them into splash potions. And after a long day of preparation, I'm finally ready. This is gonna be my inventory for when I fight the warden. All right, everything is all set up and I'm officially ready to fight the warden. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to place down some skulk shriekers right here, maybe a couple of skulk sensors, and let's see if I can get the warden to summon. So it looks like if you place the skulk shriekers, then they don't activate. Oh yeah, see this? Right here, it says can summon and it's false. Okay, interesting. So if you place it yourself, then it won't work. That kind of sucks because you could prank your friends like this. You could place a shrieker in their base and have a warden pop up or something, but I guess not. All right, we have some shriekers up here and I want to see. Yeah, check it out. Can summon is true. I'm going to walk on it to activate it. Okay, here it is. I'm going to fly down here, put on my chest plate for added protection, and then once the darkness goes away, I'm going to hit it with an arrow. Here it comes. Okay, he knows I'm here. I'm going to eat a god apple. I'm going to splash myself. It's just me and you. Bring it on. All right, I'm going to retreat. Eat another god apple. Okay, I'm getting a little low. So far, it's going well. Oop, oop, oop. Okay, better be careful. One more god apple. Okay, four hearts. Run away. Another god apple. Come on, warden. Oh my god, I did it. Holy crap, that was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Let's go! Oh my gosh. Wow, we were really overprepared. <laughs> I finally killed the warden one on one in hardcore. That is insane. Whoa, look at my armor. It took so much damage. Oh my gosh. The fight that I had spent so long preparing for was finally over, but I wasn't done yet. I still had five days left and I wanted to make the most of it, so I came up with a crazy plan. Step one was to head to the nether and get three more Wither Skeleton Skulls. I tracked down the same fortress that I got my first skull at and went to town killing as many skeletons as possible. And once again, I've forgotten to bring fire resistance. I just fought the warden 1v1, so if I died to a skeleton, that would be embarrassing. And this time it should be easier because I have a power 5 bow. Okay, we have two skulls now. Look at that. Oh my god, there's so many. I don't know if I could take these all on at once. Oh my gosh, it's like I'm farming. No, they're all falling off. No, 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 no. Don't fall off. Oh my god, like half of them fell off. There we go. We got one. Nice. Three with those skeleton skulls. I was back from my nether adventure and I had two out of the three things I needed for my plan. Three skulls and four end crystals. You can probably see where this is going now. And my crazy plan was to fight the warden, wither, and ender dragon all at once. Obviously, since you can't bring the ender dragon into the overworld, I would be fighting everything in the end. But since you can only summon a warden from a naturally generated skull shrieker, I had to find another way to get the warden into the end. All right, I think I have an idea and I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we can always try. First step is to find a skull shrieker. Oh, there we go. Now I just have to be careful to not activate it. And now that I found a shrieker, I have to make this tunnel big enough so the warden can fit through. It's smelling me and it probably hears me. Don't want it to recognize me just yet. And I'll just have to wait for it to despawn, I guess. Now my plan to get the warden in the end is to dig out the roof like this and make a ramp for the warden to walk up to the portal, but then make a step up here. That way I can place blocks over the portal and the warden can step up on top of the portal and then I can break the blocks underneath. Now to make things go faster, I'm going to pop into the end first. And I'm also going to widen this over here too. That way the warden can't get stuck either. And to make sure I don't fall off with darkness, I'm going to add a barrier around the whole end spawn. I'm going to grab my wither skulls and my end crystals. I'll get two like this for the wither. I'm going to get 
three crystals ready to go for the dragon respawn. I hope this goes smoothly. I had everything ready to go, and I was rushing to have everything ready by day 100. In all the chaos and preparation, I forgot about my beacon. Sure, I may not have really needed it in the warden fight, but if I'm doing all bosses at once, resistance 2 is really going to come in handy. So I quickly hop back through the portal once more, dug underneath the end fountain, and set up my beacon. Alright, the room's all cleared out, and I can start placing the beacon. Okay, here we go. Full power beacon, and I'll use it to get myself resistance 2. With that done, I was officially ready. It was time to summon the Warden. Everything was hinging on this one idea working. If I couldn't get the Warden into the end, then this would all fall apart and would be a complete waste of time. So I was pretty nervous for it to all work properly. Now I'm back at the portal and it's time to finally get it done. I'm so scared. Is this the one? It is. Hello, Warden. It's working. Oh my gosh. I can get him just to step on this platform. Oh, no, no, no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. It didn't work. Ah, it didn't work. All right, it just despawned and I can try again. Hopefully with better success this time. Let's head back over here. Spawn another warden. All right, here he is. Hello, warden. I had this nice platform for you. I hope this works. Oh, he walked too far. Oh my God, what are you doing, warden? This needs to work. Okay, and in. Oh my God, it worked. Okay, he knows I'm here. All right, we have resistance, and I'm gonna respawn the Ender Dragon first. It's working. Why is there an Enderman mad at me? This is the last thing I need right now. <laughs> All right, the Ender Dragon's respawn. It's time to spawn the Wither. Oh no, it didn't work. Let's quickly break this, and then I need to spawn the Wither. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Wither, Dragon, and Warden. Oh, the Wither is chasing the Ender Dragon. That's very weird. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, I guess while we're here, we can let it rain on the warden. I don't care about killing the warden one-on-one, -on -one, because I already did that. So as long as I can kill it, then it counts. I killed it. Okay, the warden's gone. Now I just have to get rid of all the towers. Luckily, the wither is distracted on the ender dragon right now. Okay, all the towers are gone. What happens if I hit the wither? Then it gets distracted on me. Killing the wither a little bit. Oh, wow. I got hit way high up. Let's eat a god apple just, just to be safe. This wither is just really high up. I don't know what's going on. All right, wither. It's you and me now. This is just too easy. You know what? I'm going to do it in F5 mode. There we go. Okay, so we kill the wither and here comes the dragon. If I crouch underneath. Oh my god. I'm going to put on my elytra. Holy crap. I got sent really high up. It's just a good old fashioned bow spam fight now. I hit myself with my own arrow. Okay. Those were some good hits. I think this is gonna be the one. Ooh, that's bad. There's the magic stuff above me. If I uncrouch. We did it! Oh my gosh. I killed the Ender Dragon, the Wither, and the Warden all at the same time. That is insane. I can't believe I managed to do that. What a crazy challenge. This was such a fun 100 days. Now that marks the end of the 100 days, and I had so much fun recording this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. But with that being said, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye!